This is amazing. Now we are going to see how you can create preference data set using Olama. So why you need preference data set? Generally, when you consider a large language model, it will automatically generate different types of answers for a question. In your own company, you might have specific sets of rules which you need to follow. So you need to train the large language model to respond accordingly. So when you ask a question, what is photosynthesis to a large language model? It could produce an answer like this, which is short, or it could produce an answer like this, which is more descriptive. In some instance, more descriptive is preferred compared to less descriptive. So if you want to tell the large language model, I need to follow a set of rules when generating a response, that's when you tune your large language model on what answer to choose or how it need to respond. So after fine tuning the model with the preference data set, when you provide a question like what is photosynthesis, it is able to give you answer like this rather than this. So the answer is more definite rather than assumption. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Olama preference data set. In this, we are going to see the prerequisite, the list of things to install, how to create a preference data set using Olama, and finally, how to save that in Hugging Face, as you can see here. So this contains question, a rejected column, and a chosen column. So when you ask a large language model, when did Beyonce start becoming popular, you don't want that to reply just short, like this, in the late 1990s. You want it to be more descriptive, like this. Beyonce started becoming popular in the late 90s as lead singer of R&B girl group Destiny's Child. Similarly, your company might have data and you want the large language model to follow all those rules. I'm going to take you through step by step how you can create that kind of data set and upload to Hugging Face so that you can use it for later. But before that, I regularly create videos with regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. First, we are going to see about prerequisite, the list of packages to install and the basic configuration. So pip install Olama and then data sets and then click enter. Olama is used to chat with Olama large language models. Data sets is used to create data set, load the data set and also to save the data set. After this, create a file called app.py and let's open it. Inside the file, first import JSON, then from data sets import load dataset 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 dict next importing olama then importing print from rich this is optional just to print clearly in the terminal next we are going to load the dataset that is squared version 2 so if you see the dataset you will have question and you will have answers so if you just provide a question and an answer that is instruction fine tuning i have written a blog post based on that so if you have a question and the answer then that dataset is used for instruction fine tuning if you have a question and the preferred response and the rejected response, that is preference optimization. So that is the difference. For instruction fine tuning, you have question and answer, but for preference, you have question, one is preferred answer, another one is rejected answer. So in our case, we are going to create one question, one preferred response, one is rejected response. So from this squared version two data set, we are going to add two more columns. One is accepted, another one is rejected. Rejected will have short response, accepted will have descriptive response. So you can customize this based on your own company's need. So coming to the code, now we are going to convert the data into JSON format or dictionary format. Next, we are gonna print for our reference, data set rows, and then just the first row. Now we are going to format the input for the model. To do that, we are going to create a function called format input. We are combining the context and the question together. So if you see the data set, you have context and question. So we are just merging that together to give more information to the large language model. That's what's happening here. Next, we are initiating Olama, olama.client. Next, we are going to add two new keys, that is rejected and chosen. So these are the two new columns which we are going to add to the whole data set. Now we are going to process each entry. That is, we are going to create a loop which will go through row by row. So if you see here, there are multiple rows in the data set. So we are just going through one by one by creating a loop. That is for loop. And for the first row, if you're getting the context and the question, then answer. The context and question, we are combining that together using the format input. That's what we saw here, the format input. And the answer is separate. So we are going to provide this prompt text and telling the large language model 
rewrite the prompt text, output to be concise and clear, and here is the original answer. Ensure the response is easy to understand, professional, and as a full sentence. Just respond only with the answer. That's it. You can change this, add all your company rules. So you might ask, I can just add this prompt to all my prompt when I ask a large language model without fine tuning with preferred data set. If it's one instruction, then that is fine. But if you have 10 or 20 different types of rules to follow, then you need to fine tune using preferred data set to keep it simple and use the context length or the prompt for anything else. So now next, the prompt, we are sending that to the large language model using client.generate, setting the model name here. We are going to use Llama 3.1, then providing other information, then chosen answer, just printing it for our reference. So this loop automatically generates two columns and add the answer to the chosen answer column and the original answer to the rejected answer column. That's it. Next, we're gonna convert back to the dictionary format. Just these are normal formatting methods. And then we are going to save that in a file called preference dataset.json as you can see here. That's it. Now I'm going to run this code. In your terminal, Python app.py and then click enter. Now you can see we are choosing only 10 rows to keep this tutorial quicker. And then we are going through a loop each and every row, the top 10, and the rejected answer is this, and the chosen answer is this. Again, the rejected answer is short, and the chosen answer is full sentence. So now this data got saved in this preference underscore dataset.json. And clearly you can see the context, the question, the rejected answer, and the chosen answer. Similarly, we created for 10 rows. At the top, you can see I chose only 10 rows to keep this short. You can just remove this to use all the rows in the data set. Now finally, we are going to save the created data set to Hugging Face. To do that, coming back to the code, save to Hugging Face with open. We are just loading the preference data set again, converting that to dictionary and then pushing to hub and providing my username. In your case, you might need to modify this username and provide the name for your data set. That's it. Just three lines of code and you are able to save that to Hugging Face. Now I'm going back to the terminal. In your terminal, export your Hugging Face token like this and then click enter. This is required if you want to upload your dataset to Hugging Face. This you can generate from your Hugging Face account. After this, click enter. Next, I'm going to run the same file again. Now it's again creating the dataset. And finally, it's saving that to the Hugging Face. You can see that it got saved to Hugging Face in this location. Now you can use this dataset to train your model and it is going to follow your company rules. If you would like to know how to fine tune using a preference dataset like this, you might need to check one of my another video which I have covered how to train a model using preference data, that is using auto train, which I will link that in the description below. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.